Michael, you mentioned something yesterday about, um, and even it makes, makes you think about how you know success or, or failure or sacrifice. You were mentioning the the Wichita house, which is the Dimaxian house, and when that really when the plans for that really imploded, that he used that that is really the springboard to refocus, and that's from that came the geodesic dome. Was that I mean, was that a, a reaction of his to go inward? I mean, we, they mentioned that in the play that he he would go to these phases of not talking. Was, I don't know if that's well. Right. The, the that phase of not talking was only one period in his life, which was the whole period in 1927 when he was really, really totally rethinking his life, and really, and I mean, he, he realized that he'd, uh, he, he, the most important thing was that he was not doing his own thinking, and that it was absolutely critical, as, it, as he felt it was for every one of us. Um, but he also, um, said we can only learn self so what you might call a failure is only a success in another way but that uh, that uh, Wichita house uh, story is is uh, was actually a very powerful moment for me because uh, he had been in Wichita developing this mass-produced house with beach aircraft Beach was very excited. It was uh, going to be a new industry that would, uh, since Beach uh, assumed that when they weren't buying airplanes to, uh, for the, the war, they probably weren't going to be selling airplanes because that was a, turned out to be an incorrect assumption. But um, so, and they got this, and they got the first prototype finished, and there was an enormous amount of publicity about it. Um, this I may be inaccurate, but it's close enough. They got $30,000, I mean 30,000 orders of people sending in checks for whatever it was stated to going to be able to cost. There was enormous, enormous in, uh, excitement about it. And... Um, so what year was this? 40, 45? This would be, well, would have been um, 44, yeah. 44, I think. Um, and, um, but Daddy was worried that the, 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 he was concerned about the design. He was also concerned, and I didn't really understand this until later on. He realized that just designing a house was not enough that you had to design a whole industry and a whole system of distribution and a whole, a, a, a whole uh, other level of, of the process to really make it succeed in the way he believed it, it could succeed. That was what went beyond what was possible. And uh, unfortunately, they, they had gotten support only to do this first prototype. So he um, walked away from it. Uh, and I remember we, my mother and I were, we didn't go to Wichita with him, but we're, we're uh, living in Forest Hills, New York at that point. And him coming home and um, saying to us that the, 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 the Wichita house was that project was completed. And uh, we had a big um, table, which was one of our few pieces of furniture in the, in the living room, and it, it, it often functioned as his desk as well as our dining room table. And um, I remember going to bed uh, that night, and he was, he was sitting at the table, when I came out in the morning, he said, I had this idea for the geodesic dome. Uh, uh, that he, I mean, he had been thinking about synergetic geometry and so forth, but this suddenly transformed because he realized that the dome was, didn't require, it was a, a would be a, 
I'm going to say it my way, and I don't, Daddy, I don't, you have to give me. Uh, <laughs> a, a, a shell, I mean, a, a, a cut in which you could do whatever you wanted with it, but that it would, it would be in pro providing the environment to, in, to live in, and it didn't require all of the, all of the, um, of the details. It was a simpler, more comprehensive way of solving the problem of shelter in his, in his uh, opinion. Uh, Doug, I have a question for you. Um, actually, it's a question for both of you. Um, so you, you first encountered Fuller in the 60s, but then you went on as an actor and then as a director, you founded, co-founded San Diego Rep. Mm -hmm. And did Fuller sneak back up on you? Was there an undercurrent of him through your life? I mean, what, what propelled you to all of a sudden, you, you, had, to, you had to make the cut? Well, I think Fuller had an overview influence on me when I started the theater in the sense that if you don't, if you're not doing work that's really important, the audiences do drift away or you end up doing work that you drift away. You no longer really care about the work. And so there was a sort of an overview from him, and I got that a little bit from my father. You, you really have to do what you love. And for Bucky, love is a tool. It's not, uh, it, it's, it's what makes stuff happen. Later, I think his ideas of systems and what's inside a system, what's outside and what separates inside and outside, actually became very important to me when I was running a theater because, uh, you know, people can either you know, the staff sometimes can get very much wound up inside, and people outside, whether they're audiences or audi audiences or artists, have a hard time getting in. You know, and I, I think one of the things I recognize about the way this theater is run is the building's easy to enter. You can get lost in it, maybe harder to find your way out, perhaps. But uh, it, it, it is a porous membrane that separates this theater from the community, and I immediately recognized that it's something that we were trying to do, and that's a bucky idea or it's a system thinking idea, you know? Who's in the boat, who's out of the boat? To, to Portland Center, change his horn a little bit. Um, early on in, in the, the development of this building, um, uh, Ed Schlossberg, who, was, who worked with Fuller and helped develop the world game, kind of came in and, and helped kind of jigger the thinking about how this, this space could be different and you know, how we could use uh, the metaphor of the proscenium in a different way and really embrace the audience in a different way. And, <clears throat> Schlossberg is a very, did the, uh, the, the, the Action Center for Mercy Corps in New York that just opened in October. Um, so he, I mean, he's very, very clearly taken a lot of those principles and is doing very, very good work in the realm of, of public engagement and interactivity and is really thinking about resource issues. My, Michael Ben Ali was the other, other person who had worked with, with Fuller. Um, both of them participated in panels um, that the Whitney put together in New York. I think at the Whitney, what was interesting to me was I was at one pan I was flew in, flew out. Uh, I was there for two days, and I was able to go to one of the panels, a couple of the panels. And at one point in the panels, there was this huge sigh of relief because Bucky always said this: "It's not about me; it's the ideas." And there was this sort of recognition that these ideas have gone out so much that people don't necessarily even know where they came from. Finish. I find. Uh, um, um, Early on, when I first did the play, I would find that older people, a lot of them, most good chunk of them knew about Bucky, and then there was a certain middle-aged people that missed him altogether. The whole group just, just didn't know it. And that the younger kids knew about him. That they knew about him from their physics classes, which Bucky would have loved. And this is eight years ago when I was first doing the play, where I may not have known about these Bucky balls, but they were being taught at, in the physics department at UCSD. And, uh, and the kids knew about him. And, uh, and I, sometimes these young guys would walk into the theater and see the poster and they'd run into the theater. And my partner in San Diego said, this guy came in and goes, Bucky Fuller, he's my man! You know, and it was just like, you know, it's the young people are finding this stuff. And I, I did that, I put my script on, on the shelf in Seattle of a coffee house and the guy serving me coffee was about the same age. He says, wow! But Mr. Fuller, but, you know, it was just he leapt on it and he, he knew about it. And I, I didn't know where do these kids finding out about it because he wasn't in the public media. I mean, it wasn't he wasn't hitting in 2000 except the buckyballs were emerging some, but not not a lot. And and so these kids, and so if you know young college kids like me, it was like water in the desert because everybody was talking about the insoluble problems in the 60s and the Democrats and the this and the left and the right. And he cut across that and said, it's you, you're responsible. You need to use your imagination 
you have power and you can fix it. Um, I want to thank um, Allegra Fuller Snyder. Could you give her a hand? Great pleasure. D.W. Jacobs. Thank you, Doug. Um, I'd like to thank you for coming and participating. Um, if you haven't seen the show, see the show. If, you ha if, if you've seen the show, see it again.